given a polynomial function in factored form and asked to find the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, which could also be referred to as the real zeros or real roots of the polynomial function, and then also asked to describe the end behavior using this notation here. Looking at the given polynomial function in factored form, we should be able to recognize that if we multiply this out, notice how the leading term would be negative three x to the third because we have a factor of x here, a factor of x here, and a factor of three x here, and then we have a negative out in front. And if it's helpful, we can also replace f of x with y and write this as y equals negative the quantity x plus one times the quantity x minus five times the quantity three x minus two. And now to find the intercepts of any function, the process is the same. To find the y-intercept, we set x equal to zero and solve for y. And to find the x-intercepts, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. Let's start by doing this on the next slide. Let's go ahead and use this form of the equation where we have y instead of f of x. So again, to find the y-intercept, we'll set x equal to zero and solve for y. That would give us y equals negative the quantity zero plus one times the quantity zero minus five, times the quantity three times zero minus two. So this would give us negative, and then we have one times negative five times, this would be negative two. Notice how here we have an odd number of negatives, and therefore this product will be negative 10, which means the y-intercept equals negative 10. And now to find the x-intercepts, we'll set y equal to zero and solve for x. That would give us the equation zero equals negative the quantity x plus one times the quantity x minus five times the quantity three x minus two. So this product on the right side will be equal to zero when either x plus one equals zero or x minus five equals zero, or three x minus two equals zero. So now we'll solve each of these for x to find the x-intercepts. Here we'll subtract one on both sides, x equals negative one. Here we will add five to both sides, x equals five. Here we'll have two steps. We'll first add two to both sides, that would give us three x equals two, divide both sides by three, and so we have x equals two-thirds. So notice how here we have three x-intercepts. We have negative one, positive five, and two-thirds. So going back to the previous slide, we can say the y-intercept is negative 10, or as an ordered pair, that would be the point zero, negative 10. And we have three x-intercepts. They are negative one, positive five, and two-thirds. As ordered pairs, the x-intercept of negative one would be negative one comma zero. The x-intercept of five would be five comma zero. And the x-intercept of two-thirds would be two-thirds comma zero. And now to describe the end behavior, we want to describe the function value or y value as x approaches left or as x approaches negative infinity and as x approaches right or as x approaches positive infinity. To do this, we will take a look at the graph of the given function, but we should also be able to determine the end behavior by understanding how the graph of our given function will resemble the graph of the basic function y equals x cubed. The graph of y equals x cubed would look something like this. And now if we take a look at our function again, notice how the leading term is going to be negative three x cubed followed by several other terms. 
but we should be able to determine the in behavior of our function by knowing what the graph of y equals negative three x cubed would look like compared to the graph of y equals x cubed. Because the leading coefficient is negative three, this would vertically stretch the graph of y equals x cubed, and then because we have a negative here, this would reflect the function across the x-axis. So if we take the basic function y equals x cubed, vertically stretch it, and reflect it across the x-axis, it would look something like this. Now the graph of our function, because we have several other terms, won't look exactly like this, but the end behavior would be the same. So notice using this function, notice as x approaches the right, or as x approaches positive infinity, the function goes down without bound, and therefore f of x, or y, is approaching negative infinity, and as x approaches left, or as x approaches negative infinity, the function is increasing without bound, and therefore y or f of x is approaching positive infinity. So this would be enough to give us the end behavior, but let's go ahead and take the time and graph the given function on our graphing calculator. So from the home screen, we'll press y equals, clear out any old functions, and type in the new function. Let's go ahead and start with the standard window by pressing zoom six. We'll probably have to adjust this, and we will. We need to increase the y maximum and decrease the y minimum. Notice how we can also change the x max and x min if we wish. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the x minimum to negative three and the x maximum to eight. And let's go ahead and change the y minimum to let's say negative 50 and the y maximum to 200. If this doesn't work, we'll just come back and change it again. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and leave it like this. Again, notice as x approaches positive infinity, or as we move right, the function values decrease without bound, and therefore f of x or y is approaching negative infinity. Let's go ahead and record that here. And then as x approaches negative infinity, or as we move left, the graph is going up without bound, and therefore f of x or y is approaching positive infinity. So notice how the graph of the given function does verify what we found using the basic function f of x equals negative three x cubed. I hope you found this helpful.